Back in spring, I planted these red kidney beans as an experimental crop. I also planted chickpeas here beside them. Now it's autumn and these beans have dried off nicely and are ready to harvest. The chickpeas, however, are still green, still growing. They still have a lot of green pods on because the first lot that I planted failed and I had to plant a second lot and that set them back quite a bit. But I really don't expect a very good harvest from them because I find that there's quite a few of those pods that are actually empty. Some have peas in, but a lot of them are empty and that means it's going to be a very small crop off those chickpeas. In contrast, however, there's a lot of pods on these beans and they're all full of beans that are ready to be harvested. They're nice and brittle, they come out easy, but that means I'm going to have to be very careful in actually pulling the plants out. There's a lot of weed in here now, so it doesn't look very attractive anymore. During this year while they were growing, they looked quite well, though I did have some problems with wind knocking them around at one stage. So I'm going to be busy here harvesting for a while. While I'm doing that, you may remember I harvested some onions a few weeks back and I did suggest that I might weigh those and I did. I've got film of that so I'll let you watch some of that onion weigh in while I get underway with this harvest. Now you may recall that I originally put these onions on the ground to dry. I didn't leave them there many days because we had some rain coming and I went to this tray. Now I use this tray for drying potatoes when I harvest potatoes that are wet in winter and it's really good for something like this as well because the air can actually come through it and also I'm able with this light load to move it inside if there is rain around. So today I'm going to weigh them up because I'm interested to see actually what the crop was. Now you'll see that I've separated out the smaller ones here that we will use those for pickling. They're a nice size for pickling. pickling pickled onions are always welcome in our house. That'll be a bit of fun. That one probably should go in there too. Any other little small ones that I've nice missed. One? This one's a nice shape. Yes, that's in there for pickling, Samuel. I know that. Out of these, I'm going today to make some tomato sauce. So really big onions like this will be really welcome for making tomato sauce because they're so much faster to peel. And the other smaller ones will be Hi, for Dad. general use. That's small. Oh, he's big enough. I know there's a point where you've got to make a choice, but that'll mm -hmm. be good. That lot for pickling. I'll take this and just... Yeah, you can put it there. Put the rest in, and we'll take them up and we'll weigh them. Wait. I wonder how much they weigh. Hope it's a giant number. More than a hundred, I hope. That's a big onion? Yeah, that's a really big yeah, onion. Yeah, it is. So is this one too. Some good ones there. Oh no, that's even bigger. Now that is a really good size. Okay, put them on Samuel. And hang on, first we need to turn it on, Samuel. Okay. Yeah, now put it on. Let's see, let's see what it says. It's 1560. Let me finish. 9780. 9780. So after some quick calculations to deduct the weight of the containers. We've got 10 and a half kilos of onions. 1.2 kilos of those are the pickling size and the remainder, which is almost nine and a half, or nine and a third, should I say, kilos of larger size onions. And I'm really happy with that. I think that's a good result for those, as I say, dozen clumps of onions that I planted. Well, I'm now about halfway through, and what I'm finding successful, and it's quite simple really with them, is to just pull them out by the roots and then to strip the beans off. So, working. 
the goal being to either break the pods, release the beans, or to take the pods off. Whichever happens is fine. And fairly quickly, you've stripped the plant, or well, there's two plants here, and there's just the stalk left. Now, in this trash, this is nice and brittle, and it's really easy to break it up. Get out as many beans as you can. Now, I'll probably put it through a secondary process, but I wanted to see here already the beans that are already there. You can see lots and lots of beans. Now, you might notice there's a few that are a bit larger like this they just haven't dried fully so i'll need to give them a little bit more drying as a bean before i put them into any storage but looking good so far and i'll keep going i'm pulling a few of the weeds out at the same time well that's all the beans harvested off the patch now. It looks pretty messy, but I'll soon rake that up and tidy it up. Now, so I've got about three plants here where the beans haven't quite dried. They're still a little bit soft. Now, you would have seen some larger ones earlier that I put in, and I think that was a mistake. They came off a plant like this. I think the, the best thing to do with a plant that's still a little soft like that, a little immature, is I'll take these and hang these in the greenhouse until they dry out. It's what I should have done with the one plant earlier because it's a little slow and time consuming to actually get these out and they're going to have to dry further anyway. Unfortunately, that's sort of messed up, means that I've got to let these dry a little bit before I put them in a container, but that's okay. So I'll hang these in the greenhouse shortly. But first, I've got here quite some weight now, quite a lot of beans, and I've been going through breaking it like this. I'll do a bit more so that I can break up as many as I can, get them to fall through, and then shake it down. Then this stuff, I'm going to put the chaff into a bag and give it a secondary smash to try and get any last beans out of it though most of it has been broken I don't think I'll recover many this way it's worth a try now this would be much faster with some type of machine and it would only require a fairly simple machine really to do it but it's quite doable by hand and I think that's the important thing that small crop and you know you can produce still a significant amount of food working these by hand I'll just keep working till I've exposed the beans only and got all the chaff off the top now the dust I'll deal with I can probably sieve most of that out but just these pods that I'm wanting to get off at this stage. Right, there's a lot of beans there and that's really good. A simple sieve like this is really useful in the garden and it's working perfectly because these beans don't go through it. It's yet all this uh, fine material does. There's a few little bigger pieces that don't, but the majority of it works really, really well. It can be sieved off really fast. A lot of the light material can just be picked off the top. So 
So here we've got the result of the first sieve. Lots of beans. And that was really quick and easy. There's, look, most of the time for home use you wouldn't even worry too much about this little bit of chaff because when you soak it, that will tend to float anyway. And I'm going to soak them before I cook them. But I might try and get it a little bit cleaner yet. So what's in the bag, I'm subjecting to some really rough treatment and then emptying it out. I'm hoping that's broken off most of it. And looking at these, most of these look to be broken. I'm not seeing much together. So I can give that a good shake. Or just taking this off the top. Okay, that's the bulk of the crop. There's a tiny bit there that still has to dry but not a significant amount. Let's weigh it in and see what we've got. So I weighed them in and after deducting the weight of the container, we've got 2.9 kilos of beans. Yes, I could clean them a little more and probably will do, but there was a little spillage on the ground too where I lost a few probably a few lost in the patch as well, still a few to dry. Now, the ones that were damaged by the wind earlier didn't produce the same crop as the ones that grew through successfully. If I could actually prevent that from happening, I would get a larger crop. But I'm really happy with these. When you consider that I grew these on just 10 square meters of ground, and there wasn't a lot of effort in either planting them or caring for them over the time. And processing here at the end of the harvest was fairly minimal also. I think these are really worthwhile growing. Certainly this is a much better return than I got from the chickpeas last year. The chickpeas, if you recall, took up a much larger area of ground and produce less. They took more work to process. So this is a crop that I'll certainly be repeating.